I pre up students, I just want to reach out and say thank you for submitting your work to these three matrix questions that you're supposed to solve using our new process of reduced row echelon form. <clears throat> so what I figured I would do is maybe just show the answers to get started on today's video, and then we'll get into some more new matrix stuff, which will be matrix operations. And I think you'll actually find to this lesson um, is pretty easy. So if you look at number one, again, I'm just gonna slide through the answers pretty quickly here. You stop it at certain points along the way if you need um, some assistance or if it's going too fast. I'm just gonna keep sliding this up to the very end. Sometimes your, your operations might look a little different than my work, but I hope we're all getting to the same place in the end. The answers to number one are X equals one, Y equals two, Z equals one. Okay, number two. I'm looking at the sheet for number two, and this might not have been the question you had to do. I'm not sure why. I'll come back and I'll update this one for you guys because this is not looking like the one that you had to do. I think this is one that I did in the notes. I'll find that one for you though. Okay. Here's number three though. This is the correct number three. Okay, solutions for number three are two, zero, and three. <clears throat> okay, matrices technically, I guess, day four of the unit, and you'll see that this would have been a printed worksheet for you guys. If any of you think you'd benefit from having the blank one to print out, let me know, but otherwise you can just copy these examples into the notes. And we'll take a look at first, how do we add and subtract matrices? So the directions are given up here that if two matrices have the same order, and remember that order just means that they have the same size. We've really been working lately with three by four matrices, which have three rows and four columns. But as long as the two matrices have the same size, you can find the sum or the difference by adding or subtracting the corresponding elements. So when I talk about corresponding elements, if here's A and here's matrix B, and I'm asking you to find the sum of A plus B, the corresponding elements would be, for example, what's in these two positions. <clears throat> they're in the first row and the first column. So they're their corresponding locations with one another. So matrix A plus matrix B, in this case would be one plus five, which is six. Hardest part about this is the addition and subtraction that you might have to do. Four and negative three is gonna be a positive one. This becomes zero, one and six is seven. Kind of going through this quickly, but literally just adding the corresponding elements going across the top row. And then I switched to do the bottom row. It really wouldn't matter if you went down the columns if you wanted to do it that way, but I usually, I guess go across the rows there. So it's really not gonna be that much different if I say to subtract matrices. So the difference A minus B in this case would just be take those corresponding elements and subtract them. So the top row would be two, and we're gonna get a negative two and positive one for the top row. The middle row, negative one minus a negative two, just be careful because that becomes negative one plus two for positive one. That's a two, and then this would be negative four for zero minus four at the end. Last row should be negative five, six minus negative nine becomes six plus nine, 15. And then the last one should be negative 15. And just to talk about order real quick again, this sum right up here is an example of a two by three matrix because there's two rows and three columns. This is actually a three by three matrix. And order is gonna be actually pretty important for what we get into later today when we talk about matrix multiplication. So that's why I wanna kind of recap how we can list what the size of these matrices are. Something else I'll give you as a quick vocab word here is that this is an example of a square matrix because the number of rows and columns are the same. So I think that will make sense to you. Square matrices will be something that we talk about later this week as well. Scalar multiplication, I think you'll find that to be pretty easy as well, that we can take a matrix and we can multiply all the elements of that matrix by some scalar. Like for example, if this is matrix A, and I ask you to compute three times matrix A, it just literally triples everything in that matrix here. So three times A would be 15, negative nine, three, 12, negative six, zero. So hopefully I did that correctly to multiply everything by three. 
in the practice, you'll see that you can combine some of these operations together. So here's an example at the top of the next page where you have to do some scalar multiplication. And then in this case, you're gonna be adding this matrix and then there's some subtraction with another scalar here. The first thing I would do to set myself up is probably distribute those scalars in. So if I distribute the 10 in, this is gonna be negative 20, 30, 70, negative 120, 80, and 50. Okay, plus this matrix in the middle. And we can add and subtract all these because they're all the same size. These are all three by twos, three rows, two columns. So then the middle one, don't do anything there. This last matrix, the only thing I wanna touch base on here is that there's two ways you can go with this. If you take the negative with the three and distribute that in, then this becomes a plus on the outside. So just be careful about that. If you wanna leave it as a subtraction, then you're gonna distribute positive three as your scalar, which is what I'll do. But like I said, if you distribute negative three to all these, then just make sure that you change this to an addition sign in that spot. I'm just gonna distribute positive three to get 27, 12, negative 12, zero, negative six. And then at the end, we would have negative three. Okay. So just to show you an example of what this would look like in a combined format, I'm not gonna do all the operations here. I'll write down what the final answer looks like though. If I wanted to do the addition of these two and then subtract the last, just make sure you take all those corresponding elements and perform the, the indicated operation. Negative 20 plus 17 is negative three minus 27 is a result of negative 30. So that first top spot should be negative 30. Let me show you one more going across the top row. 30 plus eight would be 38 minus 12. It's gonna be a total of 26. And you can follow that same exact pattern going across the middle row. And then finally at the, the bottom for the last row there. So the other elements, if you do that, should be 77, negative 118, 87, and then finally 52. Okay, moving on to multiplying matrices. So those first couple operations, addition, subtraction, scalar multiplication are, I think, pretty straightforward in terms of how we complete uh, those operations. Multiplying matrices is gonna look a little bit different. And this is gonna give you some information about what criteria has to be true in order to multiply two matrices. Given two matrices A and B, the number of, I'm gonna tell you it's the number of columns in matrix A has to be the same as the number of rows in matrix B. So we're gonna determine just in some examples down below here, is it even possible to multiply those matrices together? If the product exists, the order, which remember is the size of the product AB, has the same number of rows as A and the same number of columns as matrix B. So here's an example. If matrix A is a two by three and matrix B is a three by four, the order of AB, the product, will be. Here's the first thing you have to check. The columns of A and the rows of B. If those two things match, then the product is possible. And when those two things match, the rows of A and the columns of B, kind of those leftover parts, that's the size of the resulting product matrix. So the product in this case would be of size two by four. <coughs> okay, and something kind of interesting that I'll show you is if I wanted to do B times A. So B is a three by four, and then A is a two by three. If I said, what size will the product B A have? Will it also be a two by four? Well, I have to check. First of all, I'll do the columns of B match the rows of A. And the answer to that question is no, those don't match. So the product BA is not even possible. It wouldn't be a three by three matrix. You wouldn't just look at those leftovers. If these numbers don't match, the product is not possible to compute. That's kind of crazy because in our multiplication worlds, we should be able to reverse the order and not only get an answer, but don't we usually get the same answer as when we reverse the order there, and that's kind of jumping ahead a little bit, but we'll see that matrices don't actually have that property. 
So if I tell you um, A is this and B is this, determine if the product AB will exist. And if so, determine the order of the product. What I would do is actually, if I were you hit pause right now, this is a quick section just to see if you can check to see, can I do AB and then what would the size of it be? Hit pause. I'm gonna go through it actually pretty quickly and then you can see if you got these correct. So for the product AB to exist, the columns and the rows have to match, right? Columns of A, rows of B. So since these two things match, the product AB is possible and the resulting product would be a three by two, the rows of A, columns of B. Moving over to part B over here, the columns of A and the rows of B do not match. So the product AB is not possible. This next one, you have to be a little bit cautious. It looks like that the columns and the rows don't match, but notice how I listed matrix B first. So if you just reverse it and write that A is the four by two and B is the two by two, now you can see the columns of A match the rows of B and the resulting matrix AB would be a four by two, rows here, columns there. So the product BA would not exist, but if I do it in the order that it suggests, A times B, that would happen. And you can also get kind of tricked into looking at part D over here and thinking, hey, these two things match, the three and the three. Well, that would be the product BA. BA would have a result of a six by one. But the product AB, if you put the three by one first and the six by three second, AB has no product. <clears throat> So then the question becomes, how are we going to determine what that three by two matrix would look like? Or in this case, you know, what the four by two would look like based on multiplying matrix rules. OK, so the top here says to find an inner product, which is what multiplying matrices is all about. You're going to multiply a row of one matrix by a column of another. And to do this, you'll multiply the corresponding entries and then add those results. So really quickly, this first matrix has one row and two columns. It's a one by two. This matrix over here is a two by one, two rows, one, one column. And if I multiply those two things together, the result is a tiny little one by one matrix, one row, one column. It's got one number in it. How do I figure out what that one number is? Well, the inner product that we're talking about here is take the first element of this matrix in its row, multiply by the first element of this column, and then add to that the product of the other two terms. So plus negative five times one. And that whole result right there is gonna be the element that goes into this one by one matrix. So four times six is 24, plus negative five is 19. So the product of these two matrices is a single termed matrix, one row, one column with a 19 in it. Let's see what that would translate to and look like if we do A times B. So matrix A times matrix B, these are both two by twos, which actually means that the result will also be a two by two. Okay, and like I mentioned before, the term for these is that they are square matrices. The product of AB, I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna organize the information when there's a little bit more of the inner products that we have to compute. So the whole idea of computing the inner product is you take a row of your first matrix and multiply it by the column of the second matrix. And the way I'm gonna keep this organized is I'm gonna put one comma one to denote that this is the inner product of the first row times the first column. So it's gonna be one times five, the product of those first elements, plus the product of the second pair, two times seven and we get five plus 14 for a total of 19. Then I'm gonna move on and I'm gonna stick with row one, but now I'm gonna multiply it by column two. So my notation over here, and this might be different from teacher to teacher, but my notation is one comma two, to say I'm taking the first row of the matrix A, multiply by column two of matrix B. So it's gonna be one times six plus two times eight, Six plus 16 is gonna be a total of 22. All right, lastly, you have to do that same process with the second row. So now take the second row of matrix A, multiply by the first column, and do the same thing with the second row and the second column. Compute those inner products. 
So row two in column one would be three times five plus four times seven. And if I add 15 and 28, that should be 43. And for the last inner product there, it would be second row, second column, three times six plus four times eight. And 18 and 32 is a total of 50. So altogether, I now have to figure out where do those numbers go in this two by two matrix and this resulting square matrix here. And since I've organized it the way I have, the nice thing is that it tells you exactly where to put those elements. If you label row one and row two here, column one and column two there, row one, column one is a 19. And then row one with column two should be 22. And then these elements are just gonna go in the second row, 43 and 50, and that's what the product would be. Okay. To do matrix B times matrix A, you really have to be sure that you start with the five, six, seven, eight matrix, and then multiply it by the one, two, three, four matrix. Because if you've caught on to what's happening here, this product may not be the same as the product of A times B. Sometimes reversing the order makes a product that's impossible. Let me just show you that first element again. Take the first row times the first column, that would be five times one plus six times three, and then five plus 18 would be a total of 23. So if you repeat that process for the others, you'll see right away that these two matrices are not the same at all. So I'll just give you that the resulting matrix here is 23 and 34 in the top row. And for the bottom row, you would have 31 and 46. In fact, they, they have nothing in common at all, those two products. So the whole idea here, as far as a conclusion goes at the bottom of the page, is that matrix multiplication is not whatever that word means when we can switch the order and get the same results. And maybe you remember it starts with a C, ends with a mutative. Matrix multiplication is not commutative. Even when the product is possible, when you reverse the order here, right? I reversed it, I can still do that product, but it's really clear to me that <laughs> the product is not the same as what we get each time. So it's important if I say to do the product B times A, that you actually list the matrix B first and then put matrix um, A second. So otherwise we'll get probably an answer that doesn't work or an answer that <laughs> is very different than the product we should have gotten there. Just as a quick note, I'm gonna show this and this might be too fast, so you'd have to pause a few times, but the calculator can do this for you. So I don't know if this is the best time to show you some calculator tricks because I don't want you to rely on it the whole time. I would tell you that on a, on a test on this information, there would be a part calculator and part non-calculator section. So you're gonna have to know how to do this with a calculator and kind of some of this info without. So let me just show you really quick that if you go to the button that says X to the negative one right here, right above X to the negative one in blue, it says matrix. So you're gonna hit second X to the negative one. And you'll notice there's a bunch of matrices. Mine are all blank right now. If you have an older sibling who had this calculator, maybe they had some stuff already typed in here. But regardless, you're gonna scroll over two to the right to where it says edit, hit enter. Matrix A is a two enter by two. So each time you type in a row and a column there, you're gonna hit enter. And then all I'll tell you is we're just gonna edit this matrix so that it has the elements of matrix A on our page. And when you hit enter after each entry, it's gonna go across the rows. So I'm gonna do one enter, two enter, jumps down to the bottom row, three, four. And as soon as you enter that matrix, you need to quit the editing screen. So hit second mode to quit. And I realize this could be fast guys, so if it's too fast, go pause real quick. Hit second matrix again, go over to edit, and we're gonna change matrix B now. So scroll down to B. We want this to be a two by two. The elements are five, six, seven, and eight. All right, if we've edited that correctly, quit that screen. And the last thing I'm gonna show you is that if I do A times B, 
So second matrix again, under names, just hit enter for matrix A and it will pop up on the home screen. Then go back to second matrix, choose option B. The product AB is 19, 22, 43, and 50. And what do you know? That's exactly what I got here. If I really quickly reverse it and do B times A, that should be the other product that we got, 23, 34, 31, and 46. So pretty cool that as you're practicing with this, if you're unsure if you're doing the process correctly, you can at least see the correct answers from the calculator. That being said, the calculator is not showing you how to compute these answers. So you're gonna to wanna to go back and look at some of these examples from the notes if you get stuck on practicing with multiplication. Okay, lastly, the last page just has some quick practice here with multiplying. So let's just see a few more and what those look like. And then the website will have some suggested practice on matrix operations. So given matrix A is one, two, three, four, and matrix B is the following, five, six, zero, seven, eight, one, find the product AB. So A is a two by two. B is a two by three, right? Two rows, three columns. So the product is possible because the columns of A match the rows of B. The result is gonna be a two by three. It's the rows of the first by the columns of the second. So what is this inner product process gonna look like? You're gonna take row one and you're gonna multiply it by column one. So that's going to be 1 times 5 plus 2 times 7. And that looks to me like 19. Then you're going to take row 1 and multiply by column 2. 1 times 6 plus 2 times 8. And 6 and 16 is a total of 22, I think. That sounds good. Again, the hardest part is like adding and multiplying here, guys. So then the last part would be taking that and multiplying it by that third column. Take the first row and do that inner product with each column in your other matrix. So one times zero plus two times one, that should be the easiest, that's just a two. And then since I've already done the first row with each of those, you don't have to draw a line there, but now I'm just kind of noting for myself that I'm moving on to row two. I'm gonna multiply that by column one, column two, and finally column three. So that would be, in this case, three times five plus four times seven. So 15 and 28 is a total of 43. Three times six plus four times eight. Some of these numbers sound familiar. It's because I kind of just extended the last matrix out a little bit just to show you what this would look like. This should be a total of 50. And the last case would be three times zero plus four times one. It just becomes zero, right? So four times one is four. And then all together, how do I figure out the product? Well, the product has two rows. Gonna have three columns. Whose elements are 19, 22, and two. This is all the top row information. The bottom row is 43, 50, and four. And if you don't believe me, check it out on the calc, okay? When you go to re-edit a matrix, by the way, just as a quick note here, <clears throat> if you want to edit matrix B, you're going to go to second matrix, go over to edit. And then what I like to do, even though there's other ways around this, is I like to just go down to matrix B and then type over what's already in there. So we have a two by, this time a two by three for matrix B. And then you'll notice that this part of the matrix is already the same. If I needed to change that at all, I could just type a new number in. For example, if I wanted that to be a three, type three and hit enter, switched it. But that was a five. The only thing that changes that last row, okay, that last column, I should say, became zero, one. If we try matrix A times matrix B, we're gonna get an answer that matches what we just got a second ago. I think I got that, I don't know. Is that a two, four? It was, okay, perfect. All right, I'm gonna do one more with you. You're gonna like this one, right? Because we have, in this case, a three by two and a three by two. And the resulting product, if I multiply those, would be, and sorry, can't even do it. So if you get a question like that, you're really gonna like those cases because the product's not possible. The columns of the first don't match the rows of the second. What if you didn't realize that and you just started doing the multiplication? 
you would realize very soon into the process, I hope that it's not gonna work. If I do the first row here times the first column there, notice how there's not enough elements in this first row to correspond with the elements in this column. So just be careful about that. These matrices are the same size, so we could add and subtract them, but multiply, uh, multiplying would not work here. Okay, these two would have a product. A three by three times a three by three is another three by three. And you would have to do nine different inner products to get that result. So what I'll say is you can just check that out on your own. Um, I'll show you what the work would look like real quick. I'll put up my answers. It's a lot of inner products there. Row one, column one, row one, column two, row one, column three. So if you wanna try that on your own, it's completely up to you. But that's what the answer is if you wanna check some of your row operations. Um, or maybe just check it on the calculator, test some of your calculator skills. So again, check the website, see if you can get some more practice with the suggested ones that I have from our textbook. And that's it for today. Thanks for tuning in. More matrices to come tomorrow.